Hey guys, what's up? This is our next episode of Surviving with Leukemia by James Woodall. And today is uh, a unique day. I've had a lot of uh, clients and people over the past few weeks talk to me about uh, body image and how they look and how they feel. The training sessions here have been pretty powerful as far as seeing the transformations of the clients and sharing their emotional response. And I have quite a few folks, including myself, who remember their younger selves when they were in high school and college. They were strong, they felt good, they felt like they looked great. Now they're the age they are now, they don't feel that way. And that's normal. I think that's very normal. The one thing that I've been talking about in a lot of my videos is being able to take advantage of that day. Remember, the version of you that existed in high school and in college, that version, they don't make anymore. They don't make that model anymore. So I use the analogy of, are you even driving the same vehicle you know, that you did in high school? Meaning, are they making that 1989 Volkswagen Scirocco? Or <laughs> are they making the Fiero anymore? Are you driving that? Probably not. Right now, the version of you that the world sees and is involved in is the first version of you at this age, which is exciting, which is awesome. And once I start communicating that to folks uh, and to myself, it makes all the rest of the stuff that we thought we were missing out on or we thought we wanted not important anymore. Because now I get to focus on this new version. And I find that very exciting because this version, as far as next year, won't exist anymore. I'll have a different version. In my line of work, hopefully it's an improvement as far as my physical health, my spiritual health, my mental health. So it reminded me of some of the accomplishments and things that I have done since being released from the hospital. Previous video, we talked about some of the exercises that I was doing. One of the exercises was just walking. That was an accomplishment. Okay, that was a victory. Using five pound dumbbells instead of 35 and 80 pound dumbbells, which I was used to before, before cancer. That was a new version of me using those five pound dumbbells. Because that version of me had never used it before. I wanted to share with you life after diagnosis, especially if you're wanting to be active again or to become more active. I know for me, when I was diagnosed with leukemia, I thought, where can I go from here? How can I keep moving and performing? Never thought I would ever do a mud run again. Never thought I would be competing as an athlete again, ever. My first thought was, how do I get back to work? How do I get back to training my clients and being with people that I love being around I love motivating. I love seeing the change in their body and seeing how excited they get when they're able to do something amazing. And once I established getting back to work and training, I had a few clients and uh, actually Barbie as well start talking about doing mud runs. Before my cancer, I had done several of the Marine Corps mud runs and that just seemed to me impossible at that time. The clients and Barbie and we all started creating a Spartan training program to get back into Spartan training and to do mud run training. I ended up doing a Spartan race uh, back in 2018, a Spartan sprint in Fayetteville. Never thought in a million years I would ever be able to do a Spartan. And if you know anything about the Spartan or any kind of mud run, it's a lot of upper body, it's a lot of grip strength, it's a lot of uh, endurance, and it just seems very daunting. But once you get into the training, and once you get into the camaraderie of being with a group and with a team, you start to quickly realize that I can do it, and I will do it, and I will finish. So um, I'm gonna pull up a few pictures and explain some of the pictures of what's happening and then get into a little bit more of some of the athletic ventures that I've been on. So let me just pull up here. Here I am at the Spartan and uh, I am trudging through all of this water. Now what you're not seeing in this is I had already traversed a good 200, 300 feet in this 
their photographer just happened to be set up in a duck blind um, taking all these pictures of the Spartan. And they're really great about that. The Spartan races are really great about catching people in the moment of their exercise. I'm stepping in holes all throughout this little creek here. So you're falling forward, falling backward, you're losing your balance. I call it playtime. If I fall forward, I'm just gonna fall into the water and swim. I'm not gonna worry about falling and getting dirty or muddy because you're getting dirty and muddy. <laughs> and that's just part of it. So this is me at the end of the race. I accomplished, I got my medal. One of my clients happened to catch uh, me in a candid moment posing with my medal. Um, but that this was my first mud run back from the cancer diagnosis and again i never thought i would be able to compete or do anything like that again so uh this was a pretty special photograph so here i am um, on the course and you'll see uh there's miss kim and miss christy there in the background uh, we were all kind of traveling together but about to go across the monkey bars you know you're wet you're hot you're slippery the monkey bars are already wet and hot and slippery and so you have to do your best to hang on. But again, not thinking I could ever do that again. So this next one's called the Bucket Brigade. The men are carrying a uh, 70 pound bucket. I think the women have a 50 pound bucket, basically 400 meters in the woods. There's tree roots and there's twigs and it's uneven and you really have to hold on tight. Being able to do this from where you saw me in the last video, where all I could do was walk to where I got to do this Spartan, I find pretty amazing. And I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. The point of this is that your life is not over. You still can make the decision to get out of bed. You can still make the decision to live your life. Or you can make the decision to let that negative mindset take you over. Once you do that, you've given up. For me, personally, I'm not speaking for anyone else. This is James Woodall. I don't give up. I don't know how to give up. All of my experiences, if something is a challenge, my body is not used to doing it or has never done it before, I figure it out and then I overcome it. And then I move on to the next goal. You have to do that, and especially as a cancer patient. You have to be able to determine what your next goal is gonna be. It could be, instead of laying in bed, I'm gonna sit up in bed today. It could be, instead of sitting in bed, I'm gonna walk about 200 feet in the hospital and then walk 200 feet back. That's a start, that's a step. There's a saying that I use that I borrowed from another trainer years ago. You want to get 1% better today than yesterday. Don't overhaul your life all in one shot. If you choose to do that, great, you're taking on a big task. For me, I like to do 1% better every day. Like creating this video, sharing my experiences with you guys, for me, this is my 1% better because I want to motivate and inspire someone to become more, to be more because I believe in you and I believe in what you're capable of. Even though you may not understand that, I know it's within you because it's in within me. And I hope that makes a little sense. So this leads me up to a little more recent picture here. This picture was taken uh, just a few weeks ago in Miami. And I didn't know the picture was being taken. I am actually at a Mace and Club uh, Vintage Strength Games event as an athlete, not just going to watch, but actually participating. And the photographer happened to catch me warming up with a set of uh, Indian clubs. I like this picture because one, I'm still alive, I'm not dead. Two, now I'm actually starting to compete in an individual athletic event. Not a team event like the Spartan or a mud run, it's just me. If you don't know anything about mace or clubs, this is a new venture that I am starting, that I am enjoying. I primarily fell into it because I was having some shoulder mobility issues. And even though I do my Z Health, I know the kettlebells, I know how to get out of pain, I just, it was feeling stuck, my shoulder mobility. Since finding Mace Fit 
the vintage strength games, learning how to use a mace and Indian clubs, I have been able to um, basically rehab myself and get my mobility back. And this picture is showing now I'm actually competing at a high level and I'm able to do that. So if you've ever done kettlebells for a while, like over 30 seconds, or if you handled the mace or clubs longer than 30 seconds, you'll notice your grip strength um, really gets taxed and really gets worked. This is also a cardiovascular endurance and strength endurance test. This was my very first competition. This was my very first exercise and event. And the competitors were like, you know you chose the hardest event out there to compete in, which that's how my mind works. I either go big or I don't do it. Like the mud run, either do it or you don't. So I did it, I completed the five minutes and it was, it was a challenge, it was tough. This was down in Miami and I am, you know, the only representative of Woodall's Fitness and Performance and that's just how I roll. That's just what I do. This video is showing me working with the mace. I'm going from a launch, which is the beginning of a mace exercise into a 360, which is swinging the uh, mace basically around your head. But it's a lot of shoulder mobility, a lot of obliques, a lot of hips, a lot of balance, a lot of grip work. And this video is from last year. Um, I probably need to revise it because my mobility is much, much better now than in this video. But if you're not familiar with mace or clubs, I just want to show you these brief videos of doing the mason club. So the purpose of this video, what I want you to take home is your life as a cancer patient. And I can't speak for everyone, only myself. I have daily struggle with my medicine, with new diagnosis that come up, with new skin irritations. I mean, you name it. I have side effects coming out of the wazoo because of the cancer and because of the medications. I don't let it stop me. I don't let it define me. I explain it and mention it on these videos a lot because this is a leukemia video, speaking about leukemia. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I do my very best not to bring any of it up because I don't want it to define me. I want what you guys see as an individual who has gone through something really tough, who is now starting to see success again, starting to achieve again, and is starting to live life much fuller. And I do. I frequently wake up early in the morning now. I. I beat my alarm clock twice already because I'm excited to get the day started. I want to see what it has in store. I know I have clients. I know I have to teach school at LifeSpring Academy. I mean, I have things that are on my calendar, but it's the in-between things that are not on my calendar. How's my energy? Will I work out today? Because all my workouts, especially because I'm preparing for another Vintage Strength Games, which is in Tampa, in August, a lot of my training is solo. I don't have a trainer, I train myself. So I have to dial in, get my mind right, and will I work out today? Or will I say, it's raining, it might snow, my shoelace came untied, it's too hot, it's too cold, my kids are whining, I don't have enough gas to get there, I gotta go grocery shopping afterwards. I mean, do you hear the excuses here? Have you said any of this to yourself? I'm too tired to even go, it's too hard to go, it's not. You have to make that decision. I make that decision every day just to wake up. And recently I've become very aware because a colleague of mine had passed away from cancer. She was first beating it and then it came back in resurgence. And so you just don't know what kind of time you have. So I'm not gonna waste any more time. I'm not gonna have these excuses in my head. Yeah, I can't do it or it's too hard or I'm too tired. No, I'm not too tired. That's just what I want you to take away. I want you to see that you can accomplish and that I do believe in you. If you need someone to talk to or to email or to communicate with, feel free. I will be very soon starting to offer online personal training for cancer patients and their caregivers. And once that hits, right now I'm in development, but once that hits, you guys will be sure to know. Anyway, thanks for letting me show you the pictures and some of the accomplishments that I've done since my diagnosis. And uh, till next time, rock on.